Hi, this time I wanted to share with you the method that I use to run solo RPGs. When I am participating as a player character or controlling an entire party of adventurers with an emulated game master. If you want to run a role playing game, a solo role playing game, where you are participating as the game master with emulated player characters, uh, please take a look at my Abraham's method video if you haven't done so yet. That's where I explain my, my method for that style of solo play. But here I am going to uh, tell you about my method of three engines when I run a solo RPG with an emulated game master. Well, before we begin, I also want to recommend a tool that I use when I play solo RPGs. It's the Fractal Mapper software. This is related to my solo tips that I gave in another video. I'm also going to put the link in the description below to that video. In that video, I recommended that if you do not have too much space, you could draw the map in a notebook or using software. And in that case, uh, I use the, uh, in most cases, I use the fractal mapper when I don't have enough space and the solo game that I am running doesn't require um, miniatures or very precise measurements on, on a grid. When it, it's a system like that, I prefer to bring out my miniatures and maps. So uh, Fractal Mapper, it's a very easy to use program. You have several tutorial videos here on YouTube. I'm going to put a link to the first one. So it's quite affordable, very easy to use. I highly recommend it. You can create maps for entire continents, entire worlds, but also more specific maps for adventure sites like dungeons, castles, mansions, etc. And you can use your own textures as well. So it's a really good, good tool. Now, another thing that I wanted to mention is that if you are looking for some solo RPG theory, I would like to recommend uh, Kenny Norris, an author that has brought out several documents talking about solo experiences. However, mm, my solo method clashes with his method, in my opinion, because he handles things in a more scripted way. It feels a bit like he is creating this play with the actors, the stage has been set and he starts to handle the uh, actions and events within that pre-written framework. And I actually do not like it like that. I prefer there to be, uh, I prefer th that there are many more surprises that you do not know when the adventure is going to end, who's the main villain, what's the plotline, but uh, Kenny Norris handles things, setting many uh, factors from the very beginning like the bloodline, the, the villain's plan and such. So even though I do not like that particular philosophy, I recommend that you check it out because he also um, gives some tips and advice that could, you, you could find useful. And he also talks about uh, motivation when playing solo role playing games. Well, let's get started with my method that I like to call the method of the three engines. You basically have a primary engine, a secondary engine, and an auxiliary engine. The primary engine is going to give you a general framework without getting too specific on certain things. The framework will contain, could contain an adventure or even an entire campaign. Now when it comes to a secondary engine, it gets a bit more specific concerning sites, non-player characters, mm, particular details, details of each encounter, and the auxiliary engine, it's actually a composite engine. It is composed of different tables and tools that you can use to get really deep into the details of each encounter or each event or each action within the adventure or campaign. Let's start talking about the primary engines. I recommend three engines, and these are just my personal recommendations. There are probably many more emulators and engines but the uh, Mythic Game Master emulator, of course, it's probably my favorite. There are a couple of things as to why some people may not like the Mythic Game Master emulator. And they are, uh, one, maybe sometimes you ask too many questions. That is, maybe you find that the answer is generated by Mythic with its yes or no um, mechanic 
or the results generated through random tables and the chaos factor affecting the answers that you can obtain, they sometimes think, some people think that they get too stuck asking too many questions. Although the Mythic Game Master emulator book gives you tips and advice on how to just ask a few questions to determine some key elements in the adventure. But despite that, uh, oh, and the other thing is that some people think that Mythic doesn't take you to a specific conclusion. That is, you never know when a Mythic adventure or scenario is going to end. But I think this is actually an advantage. There is more freedom as to you never know how things are going to reach a conclusion. In my opinion, many of the events generated using Mythic and the encounters, of course, they are the ones leading you towards a specific con uh, conclusion when you make sense of things. I think it also it could be, it could be a good idea to set up some some conclusions or endings based on the level of experience of your uh, player character or the party of adventurers that you are controlling. Maybe you uh, figure out that when they reach level two of experience or three, that's when things start heading to a particular ending or conclusion. So it's all up to you. It's the same thing applied to, for example, a campaign. When you reach perhaps level 10 or 20, depending on the system that you are using, you could create a final scenario or adventure for that campaign. I remember when I played a Scarlet Heroes solo campaign. That's a really good solo RPG if you haven't played it yet. It's one of the best solo RPGs out there. And my character reached level 10 and I thought this is a great way to wrap up the story. I had this um, climactic encounter with a demon that had its own uh, pirate ship, that is the pirates were cultists. Really exciting conclusion in my opinion for that particular adventure. So I still highly recommend Mythic, the Game Master emulator. And all of the things that I'm going to be recommending, I'm going to put the links in the description below so you can check them out. So definitely consider using Mythic. The other primary engine that I sometimes use is the Conjectural Role-Playing Game Master Emulator. This is actually uh, a response and it took inspiration uh, from Mythic addressing that uh, area that Mythic doesn't guide you to a specific conclusion. With the Conjectural Emulator, you do have a structure of the beginning of the adventure, the middle and the end. So if you wanted more, more structure in that regard, I recommend that you use the Conjectural Emulator. Another good primary engine is the Game Master's Apprentice Dex, the same ones that I use in Abraham's method. Some people find it confusing. I, I don't know why, because the each deck comes with um, a set of instructions on how to use them as a solo Game Master Emulator engine. Maybe uh, they need more guidance when it comes to the results with the cards, but even if you do not find the instructions to be clear enough, you could draw cards for any question that you ask during your solo adventures and use the elements within those cards to create your own outcomes. Now, at the end of this video, I am going to give you some tips and advice as to how to make sense of the things that you generate with these emulators, tables, etc. So those would be the uh, three primary, uh, well, the three options for the primary engine. I recommend that you use only one of them. So if you use Mythic, don't use the uh, Conjectural Emulator or the Game Master's Apprentice deck, at least as a primary engine. You could use those as a secondary engine if you wanted to. In a few moments, I will explain the concept of secondary engine. But for example, if you use this, uh, for example, uh, the uh, conjectural emulator as a secondary engine, you could use its structure, uh, sorry, sorry, the structure of a beginning, middle, and end or conclusion to encapsulate or put the results of the Mythic Game Master emulator into a more uh, definite or limiting um, structure or conclusion for the entire adventure. Now, when it comes to secondary engines, these are supposed to flesh out some elements that you get 
from the random results of Mythic, or perhaps from the elements that you drew from the uh, Game Master's Apprentice decks. I would recommend the Covetous Poets Adventure Generator. A word of warning for this uh, generator. There is supposedly, um, they say that there is additional material. They are tables uh, divided by genre, that is uh, spy results. If you're running a spy type of role-playing game, you get results for those uh, types of adventures. There's also a uh, superhero type of tables and you can obtain them from the Google Drive link in the Kickstarter page, but they actually contain a virus. About a year ago, I think, I downloaded those and my antivirus detected this virus containing those files and it took one of my uh, programs hostage, a uh, DVD player, and I actually had uh, to uh, call for professional help to uh, rescue that app, that software. Mm. So I wouldn't recommend that you download that free material, and I actually think it's quite irresponsible and annoying from the author of the Covetous Poets Adventure Generator that he hasn't uploaded those additional tables or files to drive through RPG because that way you could download them from DriveThruRPG and they would be safe. Mm. Well, I still recommend the Covetous Poets Adventure Generator that you can obtain from DriveThruRPG, virus free, mm. because it contains tables for sci-fi adventures, for horror adventures, fantasy adventures, and the results are flexible enough for you to modify them for perhaps a Wild West game, mm steampunk sort of setting. This document was supposed to be also a game master emulator, but I think that the instructions is sorry, the instructions are not clear enough. They are quite ambiguous, they are quite loose. So it's not a good primary engine, however, as a secondary engine that supports the results that you could obtain using Mythic or the Conjectural Emulator or the Game Master's Apprentice deck. It's a great support or secondary engine. The other one that I want to recommend is the Tome of Adventure Design. This one is not designed to be used as a solo tool, but it works great. Despite that, it works great as a solo tool. Here it is. I actually um, reviewed it a while ago, some, some years ago. I'm going to put the link in the description below to that review. Although, like, uh, like I mentioned in other videos, uh, those early reviews don't have uh, good quality when it comes to sound, so keep that in mind. This one contains so many things for uh, dungeons, the plans of different villains. You also have a way to generate different monsters. I think it's really good for specific details and results within an adventure site concerning monsters, the motivations of villains, the concept for an entire adventure. You have some ways to generate generate titles and adventure concepts. Like for example, maybe the adventure is the ancient bazaar of the ape alchemist. So you have an idea, maybe there is a rumor that there is, there is this ape alchemist with a, an ancient bazaar or, or something. And that's how you can create some uh, adventure concepts uh, supported by that support the results of Mythic, for example. And the Ultimate Toolbox is also a great book. This again is not specific for solo role playing games, but all of the results contained here can flesh out everything about your solo adventure and campaign. You have things concerning the player characters, the party of adventurers, map features. Mm, both the Tome of Adventure design and the Ultimate Toolbox contain many maps for wilderness adventures or, or way to generate those uh, areas. Oh, sorry, the Tome of Adventure design only contains things to generate um, specific maps for uh, dungeon areas, not for wilderness ones, but here with the ultimate toolbox, you have, uh, here it is, these different options to generate hexes. Mm -mm. Okay, here we go. For your adventures and campaigns. Many things co concerning maritime adventures, city adventures. 
everything related to non-player characters, uh, rituals, and magical items, uh, sea vessels, rumors. There, there are so many things here. It, it truly is the ultimate toolbox. And you can use all of these results to support anything that you obtain with the Mythic Game Master Emulator or the Conjectural Emulator or the Game Master's Apprentice. I also wanted to point out that, for example, if you are using the material published by Parts Per Million, that, um, that material, they're basically a set of Game Master emulators for many different role-playing games. However, they are um, shortened versions, in my opinion. That is, for example, there is the OSR or Old School Renaissance emulator for Dungeons & Dragons, Old School Dungeons & Dragons sort of RPGs. You do not have a way to generate dungeon maps in that emulator last time I checked, so it's a, um, it's a good emulator to give you a general framework, but you really need to support that with additional things, like for example, like I said, maybe the ultimate toolbox or your dungeon generator of, of preference. Mm -mm. Ah, yes, there is this Schweix dungeon generator that could also be used in your as a um, a secondary engine or perhaps an auxiliary engine. Now let's see. So taking all of that into consideration, we, we move on into the auxiliary engine category. Maybe some of the results that you obtained, you want to go deeper into the details. So the auxiliary engine that you're going to be using is basically a set of any sort of table emulator generator that uh, you can use to further flesh out very specific minutiae or details of the uh, previous results. So in this case, I would recommend any material produced by Ken Wickham. Ken Wickham really goes into the more uh, minute, uh, delicate aspects of encounters and actions and events. He has so many tables in his solo uh, engine, although I do not consider it to be a good solo engine because it's really loose when it comes to... It's kind of like the Covetous um, Poets Adventure Generator, that the instructions are just too loose. You do not have a solid framework when compared to, for example, Mythic, to how to run an, an adventure. With Ken Wickham's material, you obtain things concerning the uh, stage of planning, perhaps of a of a villain, maybe the villain, the villain is reviewing some results of a plan that he's, he has already implemented, or maybe he's just coming up with a plan. Maybe you want to understand the mind process or mental processes of a non-player character. You have the gestalt process. You see that perhaps that particular non-player character tends to complete things that aren't really there. Maybe he just... Um, becomes aware of some rumor or knowledge and that piece of information has many gaps and he automatically fills in the gaps. Or maybe you want to determine where someone is heading, maybe an adventuring party is heading northwest. You can also determine the motivations, the shapes of things, the uh, purpose, the flora and fauna, the biomes of any place that you are exploring, the purpose and geometrical shape of a structure. He pretty much has a document or a set of tables for anything that you can imagine. I wouldn't, uh, this is uh, a bit ridiculous. Uh, this is obviously not going to be contained in, in his documents, but I wouldn't be surprised if he actually brought out a set of tables that gave you the uh, general size or shape of someone's hand or the fingernails. He goes into that uh, depth. I actually recommend two documents, the one that works as a solo emulator and another one, I forget the name, but I'm going to put it in the description below, that gives you so many details concerning animals, structures, the size of things, the colors of things. Those would be what I would consider the must-haves if you want to purchase some of uh, Ken Wickham's documents. Another auxiliary engine would be any table that you can find concerning um, maps, people, description of objects and living beings. I'm going to, f to put a few um, examples in the description. 
Um, you could also use some elements of the Covetous Poet and of the results of the Game Master's Apprentice decks. And the Tome of Adventure Design and Ultimate Toolbox also do contain some very specific details. So it really adds a lot of color and dives deep into the specifics of the events and encounters within an adventure or a campaign. Now, let me tell you how to make sense of all of this. I think that less is more when you are running a solo RPG. This is related to what I mentioned in my solo tips video. Uh, please check it out if you haven't seen it yet. I would, for example, only use Mythic and let the results tell me when the adventure is going to reach a climax or a conclusion. Maybe I generate something concerning the, the stage. I would set the first encounter for the adventure, but maybe I need some details concerning the uh, plans that are rumored to be put in motion by a certain villain or the uh, different adventure sites that I can potentially visit or maybe the creatures that I could find if, if I was successful perhaps in a check in a lore check or a local knowledge check then I would use perhaps the Covetous Poets Adventure Generator and the Tome of Adventure Design perhaps to generate some monsters so I would only use a primary engine and perhaps just one or two secondary engines I also really have to, uh, I forgot to mention that the uh, publisher of Mythic has produced several books like the Adventure Generator, the uh, Creature Generator, if I remember correctly, it is called also Mythic Variations. All of those serve well for um, as auxiliary engines or some aspects of them could also be used as secondary engines. But I would recommend that you stick to the minimum. So our one primary engine and perhaps one or two secondary engines now that i know about the adventure sites potential creatures that i can encounter maybe i would make some other checks if i am successful in those checks i could use ken wickham's material to determine the size of something the shape the motivations maybe it's aggressive maybe it runs away when it sees you in case of a strange creature uh, I, if i want to know uh, where a certain uh, in which direction I need to head to find an area, a zone. Mm. Maybe I want to know about the color of some sort of marvelous legendary object. Maybe a, a sort of gemstone that I uh, researched in a, an ancient book. I could use Ken Wickham's material. I would definitely use his uh, tables for that. So that's just one way in which you could use this uh, three engine method to run your adventures. But like I said, I think that less is more. I would stick to just one engine of each category. A primary engine to serve as a Game Master emulator. A secondary engine to support the results from that emulator. And auxiliary engines, perhaps just one or two, to further flesh out the details. And of course, these are, these are just my general tips. Maybe some of you would prefer to only use a single emulator for the entire thing. You could basically use mythic if you don't mind rolling several times and asking several questions you could determine many things just using the game master emulator of mythic but for those of us that want a bit more variety and different uh, processes different tables then i would recommend that you add a secondary engine and an auxiliary engine composed of, of perhaps one two or even three tables well i hope you found this uh, video useful or interesting if you have any comments or questions, please let me know, especially if you have your own method of running things, if you have a suggestion if, or if you have questions about the way that I'm running things, uh, please uh, let us know in the comment section. And uh, thank you so much to those of you that have been sending drive through RPG gift certificates to support the channel. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, uh, happy holidays, and see you later.